There we go. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to opening day. It's a brisk one here <laughs> in River Falls. I got about 42 degrees, a little brisk wind out of the north, northeast. It's cool. We're in for our starting lineup. Let's listen to public address announcer Steve. As he finishes up these. Manfred. Steve Manfred. Ty Menon. Tyler Nelson on the bump today for the Wildcats. Kevin Westhouse joined by Gregory Eugene Peters. We're bringing you all the action tonight. It's our spring training. We're going to knock the dust off, Greg, and uh, have some fun with this here this afternoon. You can hear the breeze on our on-field mic a little bit. We'll just turn that down just a titch so we don't drive people crazy at home. You know what the best part about the headsets are, Kevin, on a day like today? What's that? It keeps the ears nice and toasty. It, yes, and I'm standing right on top of my heater down here. I should share this with you. Let me pull, pull it down here just a little bit for you, Greg. You can just reach a hand down there, there once you. in a while and you get on that. Well, good afternoon again, and welcome everybody to Wildcat Baseball 2024. And there it is, play ball is the call. Head coaches out here behind home plate today, exchanging pleasantries, dinner plans, and starting lineups. Well, it's what you'd expect for April 1st, I guess. I'd be a little bit spoiled there, Greg, in February and March with some warm weather. Would have picked any of those 60 days over this one, but here we are, April 1, with a pretty typical April 1st day here in northwest Wisconsin. Yeah, I was going to say that this is a pretty pretty average day for the first part of the season, but we were spoiled for the last couple months for sure. Right, no doubt. This reminds me a little bit of uh, some flashbacks when I was in high school down in Wapan, these, these cold, brisk high school days, my freshman year sitting there on the end of the bench and uh, might have been the sixth or seventh inning when the coach looks down and says hey West House grab a bat and I was look, peeked up from underneath the, the blankets I was on and I'm like I'm good hey, <laughs> how about next game coach speaking how of about next game speaking of Wapan there's yeah. uh, that that guard for Illinois Damask Dem Dem yeah Damask he, he's good he, he's from Wapan Wisconsin and did a he's the did real a heck deal. of a job in he's the, the, he's in the, the real NCAA deal. tournament he is the real deal well you know those guys over there on the third base dugout our seasoned veterans they went in and just got the the carpet right out of the oh yeah concession stand <laughs> garage and let's go look at that real quick once look yeah at, look at their mat they're right there they're they're patting that down look at these yeah. they went out and got that just for the nice little look at that save the elbows wiley veterans seasoned veterans well for the fans at home that are that are used to watching a lot of wildcat baseball games the the mounted cameras aren't quite up yet. Not yet. So, so Wednesday, Wednesday hand. they're coming in. So we're going base offense today. You're, we're going to be moving it around a little bit. We are. So maybe eat your tums before the game. Yeah, I'm going to try to move less. Less is more. So it's got to give you a little bit of feel for the ballpark. But Tyler Nelson's on the bump today for your River Falls Wildcats. And now, it's Kevin, is this a season opener for both squads? I would assume. This it is it. it. It is. And I talk. So Nick Carlson's up there. Yeah, we, uh, so you got Chase Oxbow. So you got to go back one player on yep. the batting right there. So 
Uh, there we go. There it is. So we're going to have the yeah batters uh, right up there for you next to the. So Greg's running the scoreboard. He's going to get dizzy quick because that's that's quite a task you're going to you're going to take on there, Greg. You don't know what you signed up for. Well, we're going to give it. We're going to give it our all. We, I'm sure you will. So here we go. Nick Carlson, the shortstop's in. Tyler Nelson's on the mound. It's 2024 baseball, and we are underway. Right down Hanson Drive, and a nice way to start the season for the Wildcats, and Tyler Nelson goes 0-1 on shortstop Nick Carlson. Hey, Rob Derry, welcome aboard the 0-1. I'm going to be heading out to Rob Derry's house tomorrow night. Finds pick his own. Pick up some gear. Are you? Oh, yeah, and we're going to pick up some gear. Two strikes. There it is. Look at that. That is nice for the fans at home to be able to see that, isn't it? Good job. Rob, Rob's there. a big baseball fan. Tries to gas him up, up high and away. It's one and two now on Nick Carlson. Tyler Nelson, no problem getting loose tonight in the brisk afternoon. A lot of turtlenecks out here today. There is. I'm not sure where that one missed, Greg, but umpire says maybe just a titch high. It's two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Just a, yeah, a little bit outside, not much. Just, just underway. A little wind whipping up the pitch. Yacker got him yeah. on the inside corner. Little wrinkle. Snap that thing around, huh? Snap her around. That's a strikeout. Swinging style. There's one down. Now we go to second, second baseman Chase Oxborough for the Champlin Rebels from Champlin, Minnesota. I thought this game was at 4 o'clock today. It was at 4.30, and it yep. was probably a good thing. It gave me time to uh, get everything set up here. No, yeah. Turn that down. That wind just a little bit enough to be annoying, isn't it? All right, 0-1. Nelson throwing strikes. That's a way. There's got to be a better way here to – like when you when you hit next batter, like to just clear clear the scoreboard. Uh, it, it might do it actually. I think maybe I'm not sure. There's a way to clear it. That wrinkle drops the in there. Curveball's looking good so far. Pretty filthy, Tyler Nelson. Chase McQuaid, the other half of the battery mate tonight, behind the dish for the River Falls Wildcats. The one two, Tyler Nelson pitching like it's a cold night. And Chase Oxborough gets a piece of that, flips that up into the upper deck, and it's one and two. Kind of like baseball. I missed it. <laughs> Steve, what pitch count are you at? Eight right now or seven? Nine. Nine. Oh, you're going to keep pitch count even? Yeah. Let's look at you. Might as well. Look at you. Steve. The one, two. Yes. That's high. Cast him up upstairs. Sure. <laughs> Hey, you're, hey, the, you're, hey the, you're the boss over there. Steve. Dollar a ball. Watch my book. I'll be, I'm going to be roaming in the out there in the uh, grass. The two two tried to break that one off. Just couldn't pull the shutter on this cool afternoon. It's three and two now on four second baseman two hole hitter Chase Oxborough for the Champlin Rebels. Top of the first pitch count is eleven. The pitch got him. So Oxborough goes down. Oh, yeah, you got to hit. I forgot to hit next batter on that yeah. down there. there. Now we're going after back to back strikeouts. We go to Brady Shornstein. He's the designated hitter for the Champlin Rebels. I want to welcome everybody aboard this afternoon. Glad you tuned in. Kevin Westhouse, Greg Peters bringing you the action from First National Bank of River Falls Field. First time today that Tyler Nelson falls behind one ball and no strikes on three hole hitter Brady Shornstein. So, yeah, we got to get the batter it, yeah, to Brady. I'm, I've been hitting. Just go down here to oh, the there, we go. Yeah, there right. we go. That's hit through on the right side, and that's through. And there's your first hit of the game. Designated hitter Brady Shornstein knocks one through between the first and second baseman, and he's on over there at first base. Now we go to Brockton Sandow with. Two outs and a runner at first. Yeah, base package today with the cameras. I'm used to kind of bringing you many more shots, but eh, it's like glorified radio this afternoon. Check the runner at first base. He's back in safely. First baseman for the Wildcats today, Cody Olson. One of my favorites. 
three sport athlete here at River Falls High School. Did a real nice job during basketball season. Nice lead over there at first. The pitch. That's upstairs, 1-0. and Yeah, Cody, he's one of those kids, uh, I think people, his friends like playing around him. He's uh, a lot of energy in the basketball uh, this past season. Yeah, had a great season on the, on the hardwood. Really knows his role. The pitch. That's inside, now 2-0. and Coach Zach Campbell and the Wildcats went all the way to the section finals, played in, played West Salem. Yes. Gave them a run. They were ahead at halftime. Had yeah. West Salem. Hey, John Parsons says, go Cody. You bet. You see, we got Cody Olsen fans all over the place, all over the joint. That's just upstairs. Now 3-0 and to four-hole hitter and right fielder Brockton Sandell. Tyler Nelson's throwing the ball hard. He's throwing pretty hard on this cool afternoon. Home plate umpire, and he's kicking something off of the plate. I'm not sure. We're <laughs> Maybe some crumb rubber? Crumb rubber. <laughs> Cleaning it up. It's like a Pavlovian dog. Right, right. Yeah, I, You really don't need to bring the whisk broom in this field. <laughs> he's Remember the old, old old-fashioned whisk broom? Oh, yeah. Right? You had the whisk broom. Go down to the Ace Hardware and pick Cla yourself up. Clamped in his, cl had a little clamp on on his belt oh, back yeah. in the day. Oh, yeah. There's one, three and one right down the middle. Yeah, you go down to Ace Hardware, pick up yourself a little handy dandy little uh, hand whisk broom, right? And put it in the clamp on, yeah. on, next, on your, next to your bag. You know, it's a good mound visit, too, when they come out there and get a immediately get a strike on the next pitch. Hey, guess who's on? Scott Mann from southeastern Tennessee in the house. Let's go Wildcats. He's found us from southeastern Tennessee. He's just going sport to sport with us now, Greg. Hey, Scott, uh, both of my brothers, my, my brother that's a year younger and my brother that's eight years younger, both played football at Tennessee. Run or go, step off. Now we're going to have a situation Got here. Him. Got him at first base. That's just a great job right there by Tyler Nelson and his squad to help him. I heard someone yell from the dugout, Greg, step off. That is so helpful. And what a great mid-season move there by the dugout to yeah. help this pitcher. He steps off, he stares down the runner, he kind of goes right at him, freezes him, and throws a strike right over to first base to Cody Olson, who applies the tag. And that's a pickoff on Brady Shornstein for the third out of the inning. Wow. Really well done here in the early going, huh? Without a, even without a practice. Yeah, that was good, that was good baseball right there. You know what that too that that kind of brings up that's that's quality. I mean they've the in in every team has been they've been mm -hmm. inside in the gym and practicing and yeah. But uh, but that's uh, that's what quality coaching from Ryan Bishop gets you right there. They the kids know what to do. Game one, yeah. inning one. It's a veteran move. It's a veteran move. So did you change sides on your scoreboard now? I you did. And the only the question I have for you is yeah. So say it's two and two. You know there's an yeah. out whatever. Yeah, yeah yeah. How do you get rid of the balls and strikes without going to the minus? There is a way to do it. To so, just reset it. Uh, I think I think there's a way. I think if you hit next to that bat, That's, it might uh, do it. Let me try it here. Let's practice once. Okay, and hit next to that bat. That didn't do it. That didn't do it. There's a way, though. I'll, I'll, I'll play with there it. There is a way. Um, you'll, by the third game, you'll have that figured out. Oh, here we go. Nope. That's set. They have a pitch speed on here? <laughs> yeah, if we, if we know what it is. There's a way. All right, we're good. Okay. You'll figure it out. You're going to fall into it like, oh, that was easy. You didn't recognize that. All right, so let's go to the lineup card here. Uh, River Falls Wildcats. Austin Curdy will lead off. He's playing left field. Ben Johnson will bat second and playing second base. Chase McQuaid doing the catching and batting third. Caden Mueller over there at shortstop and batting fourth. Henry Zimmerman batting fifth out in right field. Designated hitter today, the big old Brooks Rivard. Cody Olson batting seventh and playing first base. Ty Manninen will play third base and bat eighth. And Bryce Bevan will be in center field covering the real estate out there and batting ninth. And Tyler Nelson on the bump. Here we go, Austin Curdy. Preston Thilke on the mound today for the Champlin Rebels. We talked a little pregame, Kevin. Uh, former football coach for the, for the Champlin Park Rebels was Jesse the Body Ventura. That is, that is a good piece of trivia right there. All right, here we go. Preston Thilke is ready. And we get the chin strap for the Thilke. Get the hat's going to come off. Did you ever see those pictures where the hat pops off like every other pitch? Yeah. Preston Thilke might be one of those guys. 
gassed him up, and it's one and one. How about some good old country hardball off the arm of Preston Thilke? Yeah, he's throwing about 83, 84 right now. Jug's gun had him at 84. Foul that one straight back. That's a good healthy hack there by Austin Curdy. Fouls it away, and Thilke works ahead one and two. Whips his hair back and then puts the hat back on. Yeah. I know baseball's not the most popular sport compared to football and stuff, and I like doing all those sports, but I just love doing baseball, Greg. I, don't I know. know you do. <laughs> So good to be here with you this afternoon. Baseball season, the 2-2 two -two pitch. That was right a heck there. of a, that was a slider right a there on the inside part of the plate. A little slide piece right there on Austin Curdy. Gets him looking and Austin Curdy just tips his hat and goes, hey Preston, nice pitch. Now we go to second baseman, Ben Johnson. Let's see, we did. Uh I'm not happy with that camera at all there. I'm going to go darken it up between innings. High and tight. Ball one. Yep, hat's down again. You know, chin strap and some Velcro. And first game, you got to get that thing, you know, a little sweat in it, little get it fitted to the head. <laughs> right, you just take that thing out of yeah. the box. It's, it's a little stiff, Greg. A little, little stiff, a little new. <laughs> yeah. Got to get it worked in. Got to get, you know, you'll get that thing worked in. The 2-0. Swings through that, does Ben Johnson. I'm sure these guys have not seen a lot of live pitching like this. and Probably advantage to the pitcher, right? Absolutely. At the early in the season. Two and one to second baseman Ben Johnson. Preston Thilke of the Champlin Rebels delivers, and now it's three and one. For every pitcher but uh, Bailey Ober from the Twins, it's been a, it's usually a, pitchers have the upper hand. Bailey Ober got smoked for eight runs and an Ouch. inning and inning and a third yesterday. Ouch. The 3-1 flipped up foul and out of play. We'll take a look at that. That reaches the seats back there. Dollar for the foul ball, Greg. That's inflation right there. Whew. We used to get a piece of gum. A dollar. That's like it was like a week allowance back in the day. The 3-2. Gets a piece, does Ben, flips it back to the screen, and we'll stick at three and two. I had to get my hand on here in the heater. This heater, I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad. It's it's taking the edge off down here, isn't it? I got a couple at the couple at the house I can bring up here for later. Uh, this is going to be adequate. I mean, unless it's like below below freezing, this is adequate. Yeah. I've got to keep my fingers thawed so I can keep my scorebook up to date. Got to be accurate for you folks at home, too. You know, I know a lot of you are scoring this game with your McGregor scorebook and your number two lead pencil. All kinds of them. Oh, yeah. Another strikeout. Just as the Champlin Rebels had two strikeouts to start the game, the Wildcats return the serve there. Two up, two down. Now we go to the catcher and three-hole hitter, Chase McQuaid. So it's Dad Brian. He's going to be up here tomorrow night if you're not can't be here. Are you going to be here or not? Uh, I am I am not going to okay, be here. Okay, then Brian will be up here on the scoreboard tomorrow night. He's always good to have up here as well. That's down low, ball one. Chase McQuaid signed a baseball scholarship with Concordia St. Paul in uh, NSIC baseball action here over the winter. Outstanding. He must have been in the weight room a little bit in the offseason. He looks a little more, little more square up top that that – the top is filled out a little bit more. Fouled up and out of way. Took a rip at that one. Yeah. I'm not saying it's quite a schmedium, but it's he's got that pretty snug up top. He didn't miss many uh, chest days. <laughs> <laughs> the one, two. Just missed now. Two and two. I think that's one Preston Thilke maybe thought he had. Just missed it off the inside corner. Yeah, Chase looks like a catcher, doesn't he? He does. Chopper back up to the middle. Oh, nice play by the shortstop. Gathers it on to first. Got him. I'm sorry I didn't get that, but, oh, what a play out there by shortstop Nick Carlson. Carlson lays out and robs McQuaid of a single up the middle and then gets him by a step over there at first base. That was an outstanding play by that shortstop, and too bad I was asleep at the switch and didn't get that switched over. But you have to trust me, uh, 
that was I can Nick, verify it. It was a heck of a play Nick at short. Nick Carlson laid out. I thought that was going to have eyes and get up through there, but it did not. And the Wildcats go three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left after one inning in the books from First National Bank. Uh, River Falls Field, it is the Champlain Rebels nothing. The Wildcats nothing. We're going to the second. Hey, John Fry is uh, yeah, on board from Evansville. John Kevin's still using the Evansville wrestling. Right here. Uh, mouse pad. Right up here. here. Up here in the booth. Right here. Kevin, how do I, cha- how do I get it to the second inning? Um, you want to go, go hit that innings there. right here. Oh, right there. there. Plus. Right in front of my face. There it is. It's all there. So, yeah, I was, on the f- I was on the horn with John last night. I was up here, I don't know, until 930 or so, and I was getting a really weird air message from YouTube, and I've never seen it before. So I spent all weekend setting this up. Then YouTube sticks his tongue out at me and says, sorry, we don't recognize this. And there's some – I was like, what? I've never seen it before? Oh, no, never saw it before. Went home, discouraged. I, I messaged John, and so John and I talked for probably an over an hour, trying to figure it out. We're on Wirecast, you, you social know what, group at home. You know what you two remind me of? It's This is a legit. <laughs> I'm not even making a joke. It's like the, the Apollo 13. It was like like Tom Hanks and uh, Gary Sinise when you guys were in the right stuff, like just trying to get that, that – you know, the pod, yeah, you know, the coming back in, and you guys are trying to figure out how to get that thing back in without burning up. We were trying to get the pod landed <laughs> last night. We were. And uh, Are you Tom Hanks or Gary Sinise? Uh, I would like to think I was Tom Hanks in my mind. I don't really think I was. Uh, I. And then he pulled his up, and he was getting the exact same air message from Evansville, and I'm like, okay, it's not my system. Something's going on with YouTube. Our deduction was they're running updates or something. Chopper left side and foul. They're running updates or something, and uh, I don't know. We were both getting the exact same weird message that neither of us have ever seen. This morning I got up, flipped the computer on. It was fine, so I have no idea. Hey, you know Todd Andrews, don't you? Yes. Todd Andrews would pronounce this guy's first name at Brockton because he's from Boston. Brock- Bro- Brock- Brockton. Brockton. Brockton Sandell leading off here in the second. Looks at a ball. It's one and one now off the arm of Tyler Nelson. I think each of these pitchers from River Falls are going to get a couple innings on this cool early April night tonight. Tyler Nelson with a couple strikeouts in the top of frame one. The pitch. Ooh, that's just upstairs now two and one. So, yeah, thanks, John, for your help last night. Speaking of John Fry and Evansville Wrestling, his – his son and I cannot recall his son's name off the top of my head, but uh, he went to state. If I the small fry, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was a state Wisconsin state qualifying wrestler. John Fry and his gang put quite a wrestling broadcast together. That one's there now. Three and two on Brockton Sandell. Brockton was up uh, last inning when. Brady Shornstein got picked off for first base, so Brockton's seeing a lot of pitches here. He's the four-hole hitter and the right fielder. The pitch. That flipped up foul out of play. Another dollar for some young, hungry little kid out there. Jeez, you get enough foul balls, take the family out for dinner. <laughs> Brooklyn Bishop's man in the concession stand. The line he's lodged right now. Three and two. Tyler Rose, Tyler Nelson stares in. The pitch. Yacker just Ball missed four. on the inside. That's a walk. Tried to surprise him a little bit. Took a little off of that. Tried to sneak one in on the inside corner. It's just a free pass. Now we go to Aaron Cohen with nobody out and a runner at first. We got a runner at first. Can throw that down on there. Yeah, Brooklyn Bishop, she's man of the concession stand. She anchored down the – she was a middle blocker for the Wildcat volleyball team in the fall, and they had a great season. Shows bunt, oh, yeah. pulls back. Snap throw to got first. Him. He's got it. He's oh, out. Oh, safe is the oh. call over that first base. Really nice throw down there by Chase McQuaid. And Cody Olsen applies the tag, but I know I'm going to say it's a better slide by Brackton Sandell down there to get yeah. to the outside of the bag, Greg. Big, big time slide. Right? Yeah, because he was, he, he, was, was, he was gone. He was, he was done. He was in big trouble. Yeah. The was, throw and the, ta- and the tag got there. He, he went around the tag. He good did. Call, good call by the umpire. Pretty confident call as well. 
The 0 1 pitch. Shows bunt again. Pulls back. Runner goes. McQuaid throw down. Look at this and guy. Oh, Chase McQuaid. Look at, this, look at this catcher behind the plate. Woo! Throwing aspirins down to second base and a caught stealing. They get Brockton Sandell on the CS. One out. What a throw by college recruit Chase McQuaid. Remind us again where he's going, Greg? Concordia St. Paul. Concordia St. Paul. They got themselves at Andy. Mm, nice throw down, huh? One and one. I, okay, that was a, all right. One and one. Chopper left side. Shortstop gathers it. On to first. Got him. Nice, nice play. Nice play. Caden Mueller fielding his position well. And just like that, after that leadoff walk, there's two down. Now we go to Reese George. Reese spelled R-H-Y-S. George. Right there on the lower portion of your right screen. There. there it is. That is a nice feature, though, Greg. I'm, think, I'm glad you're manning that, and I sure, hope the folks at home appreciate Greg Peters' work on the scoreboard tonight. It's, you, you know, for those who, who say baseball's boring, I want to put them on that task. There's a lot going on. Keeps you busy. There's a lot going on. The 0 1 pitch. Swings through that off-speed pitch. Now it's 0-2 on Reese George, the center fielder for the Champlain Rebels. Well, you got one way to spell Reese is right there, Reese George. Reese. And another way to spell it is uh, Reese Insurance out there in left field. I see a yeah. billboard that says R-E-I-S, R -E -I -S. Reese Insurance. Ooh, 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 that's close there. Tough take by Reese George. Just missed the plate. 1-2. Really good pitch there by Tyler Nelson. Tyler's got to be pretty happy with his first outing here this year. What do you think? Hey, he's throwing strikes. Strike three looking, and that was his third strike. That, boy, that caught the inside part of the plate. I don't Woo. know if Reese was too happy about it, but he was professional and headed back to the dugout. Yes, so three up, three down again for the Champlain Rebels. They get no runs on no hits, no errors, and none left. Inning and a half in the books now from First National Bank of River Falls Field. Champlin Rebels nothing, your Wildcats nothing. We're going to go to the bottom of the second. Looking ahead to the River Falls Wildcats, bottom of the second, it'll be four, five, and six. Caden Mueller, Henry Zimmerman, and designated hitter Brooks Rivard. There is a lot of blankets in the stands here, a lot of stocking caps, mm -hmm. a lot of choppers, mm -hmm. and a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, it is. You can hear it. I got the... On-field mic turned way down because it's windy. So you can hear just enough to let you know it's windy. This little heater thing we have up here, Greg, I mean, it's not making it 70 degrees in here, but it's like just enough to take the edge off, right? Everything's good in here except for my, the mouse hand because it's over here right by the window. Oh, yeah. So you got to come in here between innings and, sure. and thaw those fingers sure. out. Sure. Would you care for an isotoner glove? I don't – If maybe if it – see if it will work here. <laughs> Would you care for an isotoner? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> oh, I'm, now I'm good. I look like Michael Jackson up here with one glove on. Get one glove. <laughs> <laughs> so, Preston Thilke's ready. Caden Mueller's ready. Renee Bishop, she says, listening to the broadcast as I race from school. To go grab Bailey. Love hearing your voices. I keep hearing this mention of dollars for foul balls. I'm pretty sure that's just for fish games, unless Ryan came up with it and told you something different. Well, we're at a dollar right now. That's subject to change, I guess. I she she is correct. That is fish games, I guess. Yeah, so not here. Well, we'll get that squared away with, with Steve. We He was looking for direction, and we gave him some <laughs> – we gave him some bad, in, bad intel. We did. It's early, though. Well, it's spring training, so it Renee. Is. So we we yeah. you know we're going through the strike there. We're going through some of the hiccups ourselves. Yeah, as well. right. I think we only gave away like gave away like six bucks this far. No, <laughs> I don't think it was close to that. <laughs> One or two. And I saw a couple of their guys run out of their dugout and get a couple of those over there. So I think we're probably maybe par even. I don't know. Yeah, I think we're good. <laughs> The 2-2 pitch fouled straight back to the screen, and we'll stick at 2-2. Two and two. Steve, are you at 18 pitches right now, or what are you at? 23. Okay, I knew, this side I knew I missed a couple. Oh, yeah. 
All right. In the next between innings, I got a, Cheryl Schwantz wanted me to talk about the Wildcat 150. We'll do that between innings as well. The fundraiser, the 2 2 pitch. That's right there, and Caden Mueller knew it, knew it, and a strikeout looking, and there's quickly one down, and now we're going to go to Henry Zimmerman. Both these pitchers, uh, pretty, pretty crisp here. Nearly going. Nice yeah, Philke throwing a no-hitter and uh, one hit for Tyler Nelson for the Wildcats. Brady Shornstein, the three-hole hitter, popped one through on the right side his first time up, then got picked off at first base. So both pitchers have faced the minimum. Fouled straight back to the screen. Now it's one and one on Henry Zimmerman. How about the Brewers? Nice start for them, huh? 3-0. Oh. Yeah, I think they said that was the... Oh no, never mind. That was the I was reading about the Yankees. Sorry, that was like the the Yankees are swept in four and zero for like the fourth time, and which you'd think that wouldn't, you know, Yankees right, with their right, story right, tradition. Right, but the fourth time they've been four and zero in their yeah, hundred and whatever plus year history. Yeah, Brewers out to a good. They had uh, I watched the game on Saturday. You got a couple guys with a little edge to them. Yeah, they. Uh, a Freilich guy looks like a He's, good, yeah, good young yeah, guy. Sal Freilich, he was good last year as a rookie. So the 2-2. Two -two. Yelich came out popping. He had a homer. I had the game on in the barn. I literally worked on the setups from noon wow. until 10 p.m. on Saturday. And I had I watched the Brewers game and I think three basketball games. Yeah. That was, and they had them on in the back. We were having our a, fantasy baseball draft actually oh, on Saturday, so we were watching fun. the game and drafting some fantasy baseball players. The 2-2 pitch. That's hit to center field. Center fielder going back. The wind kind of held that and one up. makes the catch. Nice job out there in center field by Reese George. Pretty well struck ball by Henry Zimmerman. I'm going to take a line out to center. There's two down, and now we're going to go to Brooks Rivard. The lefty. Two in the bucket. Brooks Rivard in. Hey, uh, let me see. Scott Mann says, about to age myself here, but the River Falls catcher kind of reminds me someone of legendary Carlton Fisk, the Pudge Fisk. <laughs> a little bit, right? Yeah. He could wrap one around a foul pole, too, probably. Yeah, he, he, he kind of, from the neck down, he kind of looks like Ivan Rodriguez, too. Popped up here, this side. Make, and, oh, it doesn't get the catch. He hit it, caught it off the netting, says the umpire, so that's no catch. Brooks Rivard, a junior. Just a junior. The 0-2 pitch to Brooks. A little jam sandwich fouls that one away up past the Liney's Lodge, and we'll stick at 0-2. Gary Lubitsch says, hey, this Saturday will be the last chicken fry of the season, and it's sponsored by the River Falls American Legion baseball team. Come and get some great chicken from 4 to 7. Another one fouled up. Oh, flip, that's flip to the left be, field. That's going to be trouble. Nice play by the shortstop. That is a great play by, by Nick Carlson. He's had two great plays tonight. That kid is a shortstop. He's a natural. That's his ball all the way, and he does a really nice job coming into short left field right behind the third baseman and reels that in. That's a big-time play, Greg. And gets Brooks on the fly out to short. And three down, three up, three down again. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Two in the books, still 0-0. Zero, zero. So, yeah, I was talk a little bit about the chicken fry down there at the American Legion. Gary Lubitsch puts that out there, 4-7. to seven. Get there early. I've got there like at 6, and the lines are long because the chicken's good. How about that? Hey, did you uh, guess who was voted the River Falls Citizen of the Year with the Chamber of Commerce? That was Mr. Gary Lubick. Gary Lubick, Citizen of the Year. That's outstanding. Guy's been signing autographs for three months. He's just coming off that high, I think. You know, well-deserved. Well-deserved. Does a ton of good stuff with uh, American Legion and a lot of youth sports. A ton of youth sports, you know, have their yeah. chicken fries there and oh, help yeah. them raise money. Oh, yeah. and so this Saturday for the American Legion baseball team, 4-7, to seven, yeah. get on down there, shoot the lock off your wallets. Hey, speaking of shooting the lock off your wallet, Cheryl Swant says, hey, wonder if you could mention the Wildcat 150 raffle tickets. 
Uh, there was only 25 left. She said they're going very fast, and that the drawing is Saturday, April 6th, 8.30 p.m., down at Johnny's Bar. They can contact Cheryl Schwanz directly at 612-242-6042. You have to go back and hit replay on that to hear it twice. Or go down to or, Johnny's yeah. to purchase one for $100 for a ticket. There's only 150 sold. Winners get 3000 2000 and 1000 respectively. Need not be present to win. So go down there and get your $100 uh, Wildcat 150 raffle ticket. See Cheryl Schwanz or go down to Johnny's Bar and get that. That's this Saturday night. All money, all proceeds benefit the River Falls Athletic Booster Club. Got to love it. All right, let's get my camera back over here. That's high ball one. Do we have a new pitcher on the mound or not? Uh, nope, Tyler Nelson. Jeez, he's going another one. He's feeling so good. Good to see. I have him for 31 pitches, but we'll ask our official score. 33? Okay. Took a little off of that and had that was number thirty-four, Steve. Okay. Heck, Max Janis out in front. Hey, Chris Mueller, welcome aboard. He said, "Shut him down." Wild. Our official scorekeeper, Steve Manfred, said it's pronounced Janish. Janish. I like Janish. Max Janish. He's their first baseman, and he's behind in the count, one and two to Tyler Nelson, who appears in over the tip of the mitt. And rocks and delivers. Chopper left side, just foul, just wide of the third base bag over there. Little curveball on the inside part of the plate. Nice job by Giannis just getting rid of that, shooting that past the third base bag on past Tyler Manning. Manning third base over there. Once again, Tyler Nelson has what he likes from the battery mate, Chase McQuaid, the pitch. Comes in with some gas, and that one's going to be shot into short left field. Left fielder over, and Canicorn makes the catch. Does Austin Curdy reels that in for out number one on the F7, one down. Well. Troy Ingley says, hey, thanks for the broadcast, boys. Warm and dry. Enjoy it at home, Troy. It's not too bad up here. Like I said, we've got a little heater. It's taking the edge off. It's cool, though. Just enough to a little curve, a little high and inside. Yeah. One ball and no strikes to Cal Akuli. 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 Chopper left side. Gathered. Third baseman. On to first. G got him by half a step. Nice job over there by... Third baseman, Ty Manning in field is positioning, fielding his position on a cool afternoon. That just goes F5-3, 5-3 if you're scoring along at home. Two down, and we go to Connor Salmon. We're at the nine spot in the order. Connor Salmon, two in the bucket. Soft roller, right side, going to be a tough play. Gather from his butt, throws it, safe. We'll see what Steve, yeah, Steve gives him a hit. That was a little swinging bunt there by Connor bunt. Salmon. It's going to be a tough play for Tyler Nelson. If he keeps his feet, he probably gets him. But his feet just went off from underneath him. He went down and had to, couldn't get enough velocity yeah, on Con the ball. Connor just hammered that one right into the turf. It died. and Pretty tough play to make there. Real tough. Left-hander would have scooped it right up and thrown it over, but tough play for a right-handed pitcher. Real tough. Two down now. Good lead off of first base. That's a nice five-step lead. They'll check him over there. Back in safely. Stevie at 39 pitches. 40. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So Wednesday is when the all the other three cameras go up. We'll bring you a lot more. Uh, feel, we'll be able to look in on this game in a lot different way come Thursday. Hopefully, if everything goes well, the pitch. That's high. So Nick Carlson, we're back to the top of the order now. Nick struck out swinging his first time up to lead off this game. Two hits for the Champlin Rebels. Neither team with a run. Greg's got it completed for you on your scoreboard Look, at home. Except for now we do. Got a guy on first. Tight. High and tight. Yeah, you can hear that wind out there. Turn that down a little bit. I can't bring it quite the game action volume as we like to do just because it's so windy it'd be annoying for you at home you hear a lot of that you don't want that well they can turn down their own volume but then they wouldn't be able to hear, hear us you. right which might be a bonus 
<laughs> the two zero pitch. That's high. Now three dollars. McQuaid with the throwback. Cody Olson, nice job getting in front of that down there at first base. Blocks that. There are two down to the runner at first, and it's three and zero oh now on leadoff batter Nick Carlson. Only one spot in the order. High and tight. Four pitch walk, and maybe Tyler Nelson's showing a little bit of fatigue now here in the first game of the season, potentially. Looks like he just tried to guide that one instead of just, you know, rock back and throw. He wasn't, wasn't extending it all the way back. This is our first runner at second base, I think, today. It is. It, abs it is for sure. Both teams. Both teams. First and second now with. Two in a bucket, and we're going to the two spot in the order, Chase Oxborough. Chase struck out swinging his first time up as well. In the movie Stripes, was John Candy, did he play Dewey Oxberg? He was, he was the Oxberg. Is there a movie on this flight? <laughs> <laughs> Stripes. Saw that movie the same day I got my driver's license, Greg. What? Take, settle down, Francis, or what did he say? Lighten up. Light, lighten, lighten up, up Francis. Lighten up, Francis. Well, in that movie, they in their movie Stripes, they had the urban assault vehicle, and in River they Falls, did. they have the urban barn on Maple. They do. <laughs> it's kind of an assault vehicle of sorts. The <laughs> 1-1 one, one pitch now to Chase Oxborough, the second baseman. Oxberger. Maybe that was his name in stripes? Yeah, Dewey Oxberger. I think you're right. High and tight, two and one. I think we should combine that. I think we need, maybe, maybe need, need to do like the old movie night in the barn some night. Just throw up some stripes and you, fast time to Richmond High. There's a and, you have a big screen in there. I, I don't do. know why you I wouldn't. Do. Right? Right? Come on over and watch What do they stripes. call those? The what are the theaters that have the. It's like all. It's a. Uh, there's a name for them. Surround? Well, it's oh, – well, oh, oh, the, oh, the – I know what you're talking Panoramic about. Panoramic kind of. Panoramic, yeah. The that's about how big your TV is yeah. in there. It's like a 90-incher, isn't it? In, uh, yeah, and, it, and it's not a projection. <clears throat> they don't make them much bigger, I don't think, without projection. 3-1. <laughs> Rod Berry says, I've been assaulted at the U-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, three balls and a strike. That one finds the corner. Now three and two. I'm sure Tyler Nelson and the Wildcats and Ryan Bishop would like to close out the deal right here. You don't want to get to three-hole hitter Brady Shornstein, who singled his last time up. Tyler yeah, Nelson. Two, yeah, two quick outs for Tyler and then just had two walks right in a row. Trying not to make it three. Runner goes. The pitch. Got him swinging. Oh, he rears back for a little bit of extra. How about some good old country hardball right there off the arm of Tyler Nelson. Jugs gun had that one at 84, Greg, and gets Chase Oxbear on a swinging third strike. That's a big one and a real nice day for Tyler Nelson. They do send five to the plate. They get no runs on one hit. There were no errors and two left. There's two and a half in the books now from First National Bank at River Falls Field, and we're still knotted at zero apiece. Nice crowd. Preston Filkey hasn't walked anybody yet, has he either? No, he has not. He's faced the minimum. <laughs> so the band playing right now that uh, – Public address announcer uh -huh. Steve Manfred's playing. This is, from, I believe, Rock Set, isn't it, Steve? So I have a story about that while we're in the in between innings. It. If you want to hear it, you can't hear it because it's too windy. So there yeah. was a exchange student, I think, from Sweden. Are they from Sweden, Steve? I think so. Exchange student from Sweden back in 1990, I believe. Might, might have been 89 or 90. Yeah, 89. It was it was uh, back back in the late 80s and. Uh, this exchange student got to be friends of mine with uh, a friend of mine with Brian Christofferson, who's, you know, in, and I'm friends with him. That's uh -huh. how I hear the story. So he had some cassette tape. And next thing you know, he brings it over to a to a guy that knew somebody from Minneapolis that, you know, knew Prince and that whole 
A anyway, next thing you know, rock sets over here, and they and they're and they're and they, they had big time album out. No way. Off of off of a guy from Burnsville, Minnesota. That's an outstanding story. That's why we bring you along, Greg. Yeah. You know, gems like that, just an absolute pearl. Chris Miller says, let's get the bats going. Somebody kicked the bat rack. It's going to be up to Cody Olsen. He wraps it in the right. Get down, ball. There's a first hit of the season for the River Falls Wildcats by Cody Olsen. That a baby. Cody sees a pitch he likes, turns it around, and flips it into right center field. And Olsen's on with a leadoff single here in the bottom of inning three. Just hit the inside, just a small part of the bat, but... Olsen's strong enough to just, just kind of muscle it out there. Muscle it out into right field for the Wildcats' first hit. Pinch runner. 15. So 15 for the Wildcats? 15 is number is uh, Rico Alvarez. Rico. Rico Alvarez. Hitting first base, number 15, Rico Alvarez. There you go. Rico's in. His dad, Rick, plays on the groupers with us. There you go. So you got a runner on and nobody out. Ty Manning in, third baseman in now. Looks at a strike, it's 0-1. Rico's mom, Tara, is the president of the River Falls Athletic Booster Club. There you go. It'll be interesting here. I was talking to head coach Bishop before the game. He says, they were asking about signals. It goes, because we haven't really had a varsity practice alone yet, he hasn't really, he hasn't really gone through the signals or signs. I said, just get out there and yell, steal on the next we pitch. <laughs> our, our middle school baseball coach. Coach Nikoloff used to just yell from third, <laughs> go, 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 go. go. <laughs> so he had us have an indicator and some signs. I'm not sure they're too complicated. Pop through on the right side, back-to-back -back singles for the Wildcats. Cody Olsen digging into third, throws over, and he's in. And alertly, nice job by Ty Manning on that throw all the way through to third. Says, I'm going to go to second then, and now it's second and third for the Wildcats. And they are in a bit of business now, Greg. Second and third, and nobody out, and we go to Bryce Bevan. Mm. Suicide squeeze one here in the early going, just a little practice, I think. Oh, yeah, or or maybe just a bunt, and you know, maybe not a suicide, but maybe a bunt down the down the first base oh, side. Let's keep an eye or on third. everything here. Third, huh? sorry. Let's keep an eye on it here. Maybe I'll go to this shot just in case we get something going on over there. How many pitches do you have over there, Steve? For 36. Oh, okay. There he goes, right on it. The pitch. Fastball upstairs, fouls a straight back, does Bryce Bevan. And Preston Thilke works ahead. 0 and 1. Nice start to the third inning here for the Wildcats. Cody Olson and Ty Manning in with back to back singles. The pitch. High chopper, left side, shortstop gathers it on to first. Got him, but a run scores. Nice job by Bryce Bevan getting that ball in play and gets himself an RBI. Cody Olson scores. Wildcats up 1-0 on that 6-3 ground out by Bryce Bevan. Also alertly, nice base running again by Ty Manning, and he's over at third with one in the bucket. We go back to the top of the order to Austin Curdy. Austin struck out looking his first time up. Ball away. You can put a run up there yeah, for the Wildcats. I did. I, yeah, I had to. Get, I was getting my hits. They. I did it. There we go. I did it. There we go. There we go. One one. One ball, one strike, one out. Runner at yeah, third, third. Greg. There's a lot to do there. Yeah. So next, I was, time, next I, was, I was fixing. I I put the hits. I I was just thinking this was the only one. It changed sides. Mm -hmm. I thought that this was the. But yeah, we have two columns. Little protractor left oh, side. Oh, and safe over there at third. I got to show you this. What happened? He, it was a fair ball, and and Bryce never ran. Like he, the third baseman was trying to tag. Who's at third there right now? Uh, for uh, for them is Nick Carlson. No, no f I mean uh, for for oh, us. For, for us is uh, Tyler Manninen. Yeah, so he 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 was going to get tagged out, but he he fumbled it, and then it was fair, and it it hit him in fair. Austin territory. Curdy never ran. No, he never ran. And he probably would have had a good shot of making it. So that just goes 5-3 on a really weird play. Again, so third baseman um, over there, Aaron Cohen, fielded it. He was kind of taken out by the runner. He went down to the turf. And then Curdy never really ran. And then he said, hey, that batter is not running. 
So he gets up, gathers himself, and throws it to first and got him by 20 steps. Kind of unusual. Yeah. Two down. Ben Johnson looks at a strike, and it's one and two. Ben struck out swinging his first time up. A rather unusual, unique type play, huh? It, well, in the book, it doesn't look unusual. It looks 5-3, yeah, yeah. but it uh -oh. wasn't. Hit well into left field. Left fielder That's going back. It. That's one off the wall. Down in the corner. RBI time. And he'll check up at second base. And Ben Johnson with a two-out RBI double. Big time two-out hit by Woo. Benny Johnson. Baby. Ben Johnson puts a juice into that and scores Tyler Manning in two nothing Wildcats. And Ben Johnson squared that up, hit it in, into a pretty strong wind and bounced right in front of the serve pro sign out there in deep left field. Rattled around up there in the corner and got himself an RBI double with two in the bucket. Nice work. Mm. Don't leave it right there, I think. See what's going on. And yeah, that was nice, huh? Yeah, Chase McQuaid, uh, and it, when he got up in the first inning, he was kind of robbed. He hit one up the middle. Oh. Great great play Nick by the Carlson. short side. Yeah, yeah, Nick, Nick Carlson. Carlson. Made a great play at short and threw him out. But Another chance here for McQuaid. McQuaid hits one to center field. Center fielder going back, still going back. Gets under the ball and makes the catch in fairly deep. Center field right in front of the River Falls Wildcat sign. So McQuaid with good contact both times, not rewarded today, flies out to deep center. There, and that'll do it for the Wildcats here in inning three. But, Greg, they get two runs on three hits, no errors, and one left. Three in the books now from First National Bank at River Falls Field. It's your Wildcats, too. The Champlain Rebels, nothing, and we're going to the fourth. Going to be a new pitcher for the Wildcats, Greg, so you're going to have to get into your score thing. Right. And you have to... I'll show you how to do that in a second when we figure out who it is. John Parsons found the clap emoji. Is that a baby, John? Getting the club. Clap, clap, clap. It's a left-hander. Number eight, eight, is that right? Yes. Cody Olson. Okay, so what you want to do is yeah. go to here edit, to edit, edit roster. And let's see, what number is Cody? Eight. Okay, so where it says bench, click on that right there. Oh, watch your finger there. Right. Uh, right here. Right. Uh, Cody. Oh, that's Cody Olson. I'm sorry. Yeah, you want to hit cl click on where it says bench again? Yeah, oh yeah, and then you want to hit pitcher. All right, and hit save? Yeah, hit save. That'll do it. There it is. All right. Let's see, make sure that's right. He's a lefty, I'm pretty sure. It'll give him a close up. Worse. Rebels have somebody warming up in the bullpen as well. If you're looking ahead to the Champlain Rebels, top of the fourth, they're going to go three, four, and five. Shornstein, Sandal, and Cohen are who I have on my bingo card. I forgot. Yeah, what when I hit change sides, I have to you have to hit the batting, you know, move it up because oh, yeah. it 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 changed sides back to where it was before. Oh, you know? really? Which is fine. I mean, I figured it out. Yeah, you'll figure the nuances literally by game four. You'll be like, oh, no, I didn't know it did that. Oh, I didn't know it cleared Diffie to this. There's some stuff that's not intuitive that you'll figure out, like, oh, if you hold your tongue the right way and then click that, that'll work. <laughs> that type of stuff. All right, Brady Shornstein, three-hole hitter. He is one for one today, singled back in the first. How many pitches do you have, Steve? No, oh, but new, new pitcher now, zero. Oh, that's right. Zero. So you can reset that. I don't know how to hit. I don't, yeah. I got it. And there it is. So, yeah, new chucker. So the, now the question is, is who went to first base since Cody Olsen is pitching? We don't know that yet. Uh, Let's see. You got your binoculars? Cal Dumond. Oh, Cal Dumond over there at first. So I wonder who he went in for. I don't. 
So Cal Dumond is at first. So we'll figure that out later. All I know is he's playing first base. Cal Dumond. 2-0. Uh, and Brady Shornstein. Cody Olson rocks and delivers. Misses there. Now 3-0. Wildcats up 2-0 here in the middle frames. Cody Olson trying to find the strike zone now. He's got the nice blue glove, the pitch. That one is there, now 3-1. We're going to have softball on the River Falls Sports Broadcasting yes. Network on starting Can't on Saturday wait. for the first time ever. Saturday, love it, right from uh, River Falls High School. Yeah, whoever headed that up, were you guys showing some interest in that? That was awesome. And went out and got another set of gear. And I well, it all, it all started with, with Chantel Dulas, and then, then Cheryl Swans got involved. And next thing you know, we got an army of people helping out, which is Ooh, great. Love it. So we'll do that Saturday. So you got to tell the folks that I'm tied up tomorrow because I'm going to be here. And he walked him. So he got him to full count. And Shornstein, the three hole hitter, garners himself a leadoff free pass. Brockton Sandell up at the plate for the Rebels. As our the Godfather gets the camera ready to rock. Here we go. Sandell, four-hole hitter. He walked and the one's caught stealing his last time up, waving that bright orange bat. Hit into right oh, that's field. A that's a double good. at least. That is down and that is off, uh, rolling around into the corner. Runner coming around third. Look at him go. And he will score at home. Really nice double off the bat of Brockton Sandell to score Brady Shornstein all the way from first base. And that was a protractor with some slice on it and gets himself a double, RBI double. Runner at second now with nobody out and a run in here in the top of the fourth for the Champlin Rebels. They got something cooking. They got something cooking and they already got one bird in. They already got a chicken in the coop. <laughs> one bird in the hand is better than two in the bush, they say, it Kevin. It is. That's upstairs, ball one. Cody Olson on the mound for the Wildcats. They got one in, no outs. Runner at second. Aaron Cohen. Ooh, that got him right in the rump. Right in the beef. He'll be fine. That just goes down as HBP. Now it's runners at first and second. Hey, good news, Greg, the force is on now, huh? How about that? That's right. And we go to right, Reese George. Reese struck out looking his first time up. Boy, still nobody out. There's one in. Maybe a bunt situation here in the middle. Reese George, the center fielder. Made a nice play on Chase McQuaid. That's behind him. Yeah, he's uh, his his lead foot's just coming down. It's it's pointing straight over there. Mechanics, huh? It's early in the season. Yeah. Greg, you want to do a mound visit? <laughs> Chase McQuaid's doing just that. Yeah, he is. He's like, hey. Yeah, he just had, he's, uh, you know, stepping with his lead, you know, with his right foot, and he's just, instead of coming right at the plate or right as, you know, as mm -hmm. his target, he's, I mean, that thing came all the way over probably 7 o'clock, and you can see right where the last two pitches have been just a bit inside. <laughs> yeah. Is Bob Uecker still calling games? Or uh, he, he is, officially but sparsely. He's 90 right. now. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't know if he was if he had officially retired. Not or? officially. I think he did opening day, too. But uh, 90. I mean, you can imagine 90 is not 50. <laughs> you know, in the most polite way I can say it. 2-0. Oh. Uh, and Reese George. Cody Olson trying to find the Presidential zone. candidates are both about 80. They're, they're a little up, over. They're, they're up a little there. north of 80. They're up there. 
There's the mound of it. Coach Bishop's yeah. heading out to the mound. Yeah, it'd be so easy to get into the political commentary. But that's, I always say this one thing about River Falls sports broadcasting, this is a uh, – it's a refuge from everything right. that's serious right. about life. I'm right? with you. No, this I'm, is, I'm with you. This I, is a, I would love to get into it right now. It makes no. it, but this is a refuge, Yeah. right? This is a high school I'd rather talk athletic about event. This is a refuge from everything, Colton, else, from everything uh, that's real. Colton Nesbitt, I was just going to bring him up. Uh, I think the last time I saw him, which was probably just a few weeks ago, I think he grew another six inches. <laughs> he, I swear the kid was about six foot. About a month ago, now he's about six five. <laughs> they grow like that sometimes, don't Good they? Good gracious! Like weeds. All two right. on, nobody out. Two on, two on, nobody out. Reese George ahead in the count, two and zero. Oh. The pitch that's hit into left field. Left fielder moving over and makes the catch. Nice job out there in. Left field by Austin Curdy, covering a little bit of real estate and gets the first out. So George flies out to left. There's one down, and we go to Max Yanish now. ball inside you know what i'm gonna do kevin i'm gonna text my wife jenna and okay. see if she can record the lsu iowa women's ncaa game oh yeah what time does it start seven six i think six oh geez early the one oh hit to third uh oh bobbled gathered on to first everybody's gonna be safe it's number 10 over there. Is that still our same third baseman, Ty Manning, in number 10? Uh, I'm trying to see his number. 10. Yeah. That's going to go as an E5. Yep, that's Ty. Bases are loaded. Had it. Just got away from him on a cool afternoon. Bases juice now with just one out. We're going to Cal Akuli. And Cal rips one down the left field line. They got the windmill going over that third. One in. Here comes two in. And they're going to hold them up. That's a two RBI double for Cal. Okuli rips one down into the left field corner. And Okuli with a two RBI double. And the Champlain Rebels take the lead. And we go runners at second and third now with Connor Salmon coming up, who's one for one. Mm. Number seven for them. Is this the same guy? Yeah, Max. Uh, number seven. Connor Salmon? No, Tristan. Oh, oh yeah. Tristan Wexeth. That's okay. We don't have to worry All about right. that later. We'll get that later. We'll get that later. So Tristan Wexeth is in for Connor Salmon. We'll get that between innings. Tristan Weck. Weckseth. So Tristan Weckseth is in with just one out and the base is loaded. Cody Olson left that one upstairs, ball one. Running at second base, number 17, Paul DeLong. Pinch runner at second, Paul DeLong. High, 2-0. Oh. Activity in the Wildcat bullpen. I know, I think, I think uh, you already... I, I've got him in there. He's I know. A, it's okay. I, He's just down a ways. It's okay. What, uh, two one. Oh, you see it save on that? No. I did, but didn't grab it. Here, I'll show you how to do that. Just find his name. Just put him in the yeah, nine, in nine spot. Put a nine next to him over here. Right here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Put a nine in there. There hit you go. Save. Now hit save. Bam. That'll do it. There it oh. is. Two balls. Two strikes. 
Cody Olson trying to get himself an out here with runners at second and third. The pitch jammed a little flip towards left field. That's going to get out of play back in the two rows back just beyond the dugout, and we'll stick at two and two. Yeah, I guess we're not doing the dollar baseballs for high school baseball. Just a chunk of candy, piece of candy. Concessions coordinator Renee Bishops she deny was, that one. She was driving, and we almost made her. We almost put her in the ditch with that. <laughs> Popped up the shoot. Third baseman calling. Under it, a nice play right there by third baseman Ty Manning in to get Tristan. Uh, Westgeth uh, on the fly out here on the near side. Two down. And a five, two down, and we go back to the top of the order to Nick Carlson. High and tight, ball one. Scoreboard's correct, 3-2. Champlin Park here in the middle frames on a blustery April Fool's Day. <clears throat> I haven't got any April Fool's today, Fools today, have you? Not that I'm aware of. Anything. Not yet. I got a I got a good one over Christmas, though. An April my, Fool's? For my daughter. It was a something she learned on TikTok. It was my oldest daughter. Fly ball to short center coming in, and oh, almost a collision out there. But I think the right fielder, Nick Henry Zimmerman, says, I'll have some of that. And Henry Zimmerman steps in front of the center fielder and makes the play to record the final out of the inning. So Cody Olson finds the strike zone and gets a little bit of defense behind him and kind of limits the damage here in the top of inning four. They do get... Three runs on two hits, one error, and two left. Three and a half in the books now. It's Champlin Park three, the Wildcats two. Yeah, so my daughter calls me just on a whim, just out of nowhere. I said, Dad, you know how the gas stations, you know, put uh, like green colored handles on the on their pumps, you know, uh -huh. for Christmas time? And I'm like, <laughs> and as soon as she said that, I went, uh-oh. You, you did not put diesel on the car, did you? <laughs> and she's like, I didn't know. And I'm like, uh, and I got, you know, I was, I wasn't you yelling at her, but I got mad. I'm like, yeah. well, we have to, don't drive it. We have to right. bring, and, you know, and then all of a sudden she, you know, tells me it was a joke. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you right now, when my daughter was 16, that happened and it was not a joke. <laughs> she, uh, she called and you know what she 31. said? What'd she say? She said, I got gas all over me. She goes, that nozzle doesn't fit in there very good. And I got gas all over me. I'm like, what did you do? Like, what color is the handle? Well, green. I said, no, no, that's like diesel. won't fit in there. I said, whatever you do, do not start the car. Yeah. So they got, it's uh, the new pitcher. Is it Tanner Wiley? Is that right, Steve? So he's in there. So you got to put, put him as the pitcher. All right, so. So Tanner Wiley, did you see him there? And he got it. Yeah. Look at you. Steve, you have the Rockford Files theme song over there? It's a nice job for... Preston Do you know who the who the Wildcats play tomorrow? I don't know. You know what? Uh, <coughs> have their schedule right here. I didn't even realize there was a game until I was up here for 20 minutes. So much stuff going on. Work is very, very busy I'm trying to fit this in here. So here we go. Caden Mueller's in. Struck out looking his first time up in the bottom of the fourth. Wildcats down by a run. Follows that one straight back. That's a pretty far sh fresh arm. They're off the arm of Tanner Wiley. The Wiley Coyote. Chris Mueller says, all right, let's get this back. I'm with you, Chris. Oops, and I got the camera pointed over there. How about that? Away. One and one. Sorry about that, folks. Boy, the mounted cameras make a. Oh, so much better. This is. Ma make it. Well, it's tough. It's just it's tough. Yeah. I'll just be flipping around here better. 
come later in the week. Right up back through the box. Nice single for leading off the bottom of the fourth for Caden Mueller. Turn that one right around, and Mueller says, I'll put this one right backwards. Started and right on into center field, and Mueller leads off with a leadoff single here in the bottom of inning four. Now we go to Henry Zimmerman. Wildcats looking to scratch and get that run. A couple of those runs back. Took a 2 nothing lead and then gave up the three spot. That one finds the top of the zone. It's 0-1. A couple of doubles in the top half of the inning for the, for the Rebels. Henry Zimmerman lined out to center his first time up. Throw over to first. Back in safely. Is well, that Miller. turtle there out in right field when... Uh, Champlin Park hit one down there in the corner, and that was we're going to get a new gate over there oh, yeah. soon to yes, be able to bring that turtle out, out. during game. Mm -hmm. During game, so it's not now. If it gets stuck in there, the players just have to mm -hmm. raise their hand, and the umps will stop it. But sometimes they get a free base or whatever. It's I think that was Brockton Sandell who ripped one down in that corner. Yeah. One ball and one strike. That's down now. Two and one. Two balls and a strike. Runner at first, nobody out. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Three, two, Champlin Park. Down three and one now. I think it's a good thing we have this heater, by the yeah. way. Like it's not like take your coat off good, but it's no, no, Keep it's not even close to that. <laughs> We've got taking the edge off a little bit. Three and two on Henry Zimmerman, the right fielder. Henry stepped in right in front of center fielder Bryce Bevan. Make a play at the end of the last inning. The pitch away and garners himself a free pass, does Henry. And the Wildcats are in business here in the bottom of the fourth with runners at first and second. Now we're going to go to big old Brooks Rivard. Steve doesn't sound uh, no preseason no, voice for that guy no, on the mic over no, there. Good no, Lord. No. He's in midseason. Sounding crisp. Midseason form. Popped up. That's going to be close to the dugout and just out of play. Souvenir for some young fan over there. Hey, not a bad crowd, though, for a pretty cool, crisp, yeah. early April day, is it? Great crowd for sub-40 degrees. Right? Own one now on Brooks. Brooks Rivard flew out to short. First time up, Nick Carlson made a nifty play behind the third base bag. That one just misses there. Kevin and, now and, one and Brooke, one. Brooks pulled off that one just a hair. He he keeps that front shoulder down just a little bit further. That one's you're going to see a drive off the off the River Falls State Bank sign in right center field over there. Looks like he's ready to hit. Looks like he's seen the ball very well. They called that a strike. He did. He looks like he's on him. I like Brooks. You know, he, he's got that the lineman mentality. He just goes short sleeves. Boom. Done. Done. The one, two. Flipped into left. Left fielder. Cruising over and Got makes the, the catch. Guy. Boy, Brooks has left Brooks has some quick hands. He That's just he it. just flicked the bat out there and he hit a P rod to left field. It was right at the left fielder though for out number one. That gets First baseman number eight, Cody Olson. Left fielder makes a play, and now there is one out with runners at first and second. We go to Cody Olson. One in the bucket on the F7. Cody Olson singled and scored his last time up, one for one today. Looking to extend that hitting streak here early in the season. Looks at a ball away. One ball and no strikes. Kevin Westhouse and Greg Peters bringing you all the action this afternoon. Glad you could join us on a brisk one. It's opening day here in River Falls. 
in the dirt, gets away from the catcher, and everybody's going to be safe. On down to second and third they go. Wild pitch, runners advance second and third, and there they are for Cody Olson. How about it, Cody? Get into one here, huh? Gassed him up high and tight, two and one. Got up in his kitchen a bit there, Greg. Cody Olson trying to help himself out. He's on the mound right now for the Wildcats. Yeah. Gave up three in the top of the fourth, trying to get himself back in the win column. Look at this. Infield tucked in a little bit. Look at that. It's all on the, in on the edge of the grass. The pitch shows Bunt. Bunt's down. It's a beauty. Nice play. And got him at first base, but suicide squeeze yeah. executed to perfection. You here called in the it early earlier, going. didn't you? He likes to do those. So I'm going to give him an RBI on that. That ends up going. Uh, that ends up going two, three for the putout, but does plate the run. Caden Mueller, everybody gets the signs and executes it to perfection. Turn that down, the wind. And uh, the Wildcats knock this thing up at three apiece on the nicely executed suicide squeeze by Cody Olson. Third baseman Ty Manon at the plate, fouls one off to over the first base dugout. Henry Zimmerman did end up getting over to third on that as well. Good base running. Yeah, really nicely done here in the early going, huh? Good baseball right there. Mm -hmm. Three apiece, the 0-1. Hit right at the second baseman. Tip of his cap high. And Mananin lines out to second for out number three. But the Wildcats do get one of those three back. They get one run on one hit. No errors. Okay. And one left after four in the books. Roll well knotted at three apiece. Be a new pitcher for River Falls. Not sure who that's going to be yet. Head coach Ryan Bishop out there waiting, waiting. Let's see who it's going to be. Looks like it is going to be number 20 for the Wildcats, Henry Zimmerman. Zimmerman, the big righty on the mound for River Falls. And in right field goes Austin Curdy, I believe, out in right. Nope, it's not Austin Curdy in right. It's number eight, I think. No, it is just Tyler Nelson is in left. Starting left here. Do you guys publish those, uh, the books right after the game or no? Um, I don't. I'm just doing broadcasts. Because that's not the official one? No, not official. I'm not sure. Steve might keep the official one. So Tyler Nelson's in left field. And on the bump is Henry Zimmerman. Now pitching for the Wildcats is number 20, Henry Zimmerman. Okay, Greg, I got it. Henry Zimmerman, I already got him in there for you. Oh, that a boy. Yeah. So that Henry boy. Zimmerman on the mound. Where's that? Oh, right there. I put that guy to warm it up for you. How you about ever met that? Joe? We just met. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just warmed that mitten up for you. How does that feel? Feels great. <laughs> 
this is number 12, so this is. We're back to the top of the order, Nick, yeah. Carl, uh, Nick Carlson. Well, number two. Excuse me, uh, Chase Oxborough? Yeah. I forgot what Nick did. Nick flew out as last, or yeah, that last out. To center, I think? Yeah, it was. There it is. So now we're going to Chase Oxborough here in the top of the fifth, two, hole, two spot, and Chase's, oh yeah, thank you. Chase uh, struck out swinging twice today. Henry Zimmerman, who gassed him up. Jug's gonna have that one at 84. Zimmerman rares back for a little bit extra and it's 0-1. On uh, two hole hitter, Chase Oxborough. Zimmerman, high knee kick and here it comes. He looks like a hurler, doesn't he? He's got, he, he's got that, uh, the frame. Is he 6'3", 6'4"? I think that's a, that's, that's about, I'd say, yeah, right at 6'2". 6'3", like yeah. It's a tall drink of water, isn't yeah. he? I don't know, what's the uh, what's the talk here? They thought he hit him or what? Everybody's good? I'm not sure what that was about right there, Greg. What did you have? I, I don't, I have no idea. Maybe they just got crossed up on their signals. He thought he was maybe throwing a curve, and he threw a fastball or something like that. Chase McQuaid says, hey, I had a two down there, and you throw me the old number one. <laughs> Make sure they're getting their communication right. Yeah, it's early in the season. Pitch count again now is two for him. So if you want to go yeah. that. For Nick, Henry, excuse me, Henry Zimmerman. The pitch. Whew, a pie and tight. Troy Ingley says, guys, when a break in action, please give tip of the cap to River Falls coaching staff. Top of the line, guys. Coach Bishop Vreezer, uh, Harmon. Always treated well when they come to umpire at the bank. You bet, Troy. Yeah, they're a good group, right? Uh, they do a nice job with the kids. They know the game well. So thanks for, uh, thanks for noticing that. Their slogan this year is, I got you. I got you. Yeah, there you go. Their two team, ball. Their team slogan this year. Two balls and two strikes. Henry Zimmerman. From the windup, fouled away. Nice at bat here by Oxborough. Yeah, Troy, next time when you come to umpire, we'll have the center field camera in so we'll be able to critique your strike zone. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about putting on the uh, K zone in there. No, I won't do that for high school baseball, but kind of fun. The 2-2 pitch. Whew, that's filthy. Just missed. Pretty good take there by Oxborough. I think it surprised him. Uh, let that go. It's 3-2. and two. Brady Sorenst uh, Shornstein waits on deck for the Champlin Park Rebels. The 3-2 inside. Lost him. And a leadoff walk for Oxborough. Here in the top of inning five. Now we're going to go to designated hitter Brady Shornstein. Brady is one for one with a walk and a run scored today. Boy Zimmerman, he's bringing the heat. He's got a little, little something, something, a little giddy up on that, huh? <laughs> oh, that gets away. Skips in front of the plate, way up on the netting. That's going to be a dead ball, and to second base goes Oxborough on a wild pitch. So there's the go-ahead run at second base with nobody out and three-hole hitter Brady Shornstein up in the count, one ball and no strikes. 2-0. Brockton Sandall waits on deck. He wrapped a double down into the right field corner his last time up, an RBI double. Well, I tell you, once uh, Henry Zimmerman kind of, once he finds that strike zone, he his his motion is effortless. Good, about as good a form as you can get. Yeah. 3 0. Lost him. He's got missing walk. in the same spot. 
back-to-back -back walks. Now the force is on. Obviously, that's not a bad thing. Now we go to Brockton Sandell with nobody out and runners at first and second for Champlin Park. Conference here over here with the coach. I don't know if you're going to have your four-hole hitter bunting. Highly unlikely. But, hey, you never know, right? Fundamentals. Troy Ingley says, I'd welcome the K-Zone. <laughs> He's that good, Greg. He's that good. That confident. That's confidence. So bring it on. We'll have that set up for you. Wednesday. Is this Travis yeah. something right now, right here? I'm not sure. Whew. Rurg back and fires a strike. It's 0-1 now on four-hole hitter Brockton Sandell. Aaron Cohen waits on deck for Champlin Park. Henry Zimmerman, kind of nice velocity. He's got to just dial it in a little bit. The pitch, high and tight, one and one. He could be a good one. What year is Henry? Is he a junior? Uh, Henry. Number 20. Yep. Senior. Senior. Can they call the balk? Balk is to call, and runners will advance. Look at that. There they I go. was looking down at the. I didn't. I didn't see that. I was looking down at the. No pitch. Balk. High two and one now. Two balls, one strike. Nobody out. Champlin Park in business here in the fifth. Henry struggling a bit right now to find the zone. Fouled away, three and two. Almost threw that one past him. Uh, Brockton Sandell almost pulled that right out of Chase McQuaid's mitt and flipped it foul. Hey, want to thank our sponsor, First National Bank of River Falls as well. Proud sponsors of everything Wildcat Sport right here on the River Falls Sports YouTube Network. Jeff Johnson out tell down there at the bank getting it done for you. That school board elections tomorrow. Tomorrow. I've already voted. My vote is in. You pre-voted? Pre-voted. What do you do that online or what? No, right there. Uh, no, I walked them right at City Hall. Okay. Bases are full of rebels. Bases are juiced. Three walks. That's usually spells trouble. Bases juiced. We're going to Aaron Cohen, five-hole hitter, grounded out to short and hit by a pitch and he also scored a run and it'd be a little conference. Joe, is it warmer here in the, the press mound. box or outside? <laughs> We're huddled around the little heater right here. This thing's not kicking out a ton of heat, but not bad. Yeah, I have some heaters that in my garage and I, I it's this one's not bad, but this it other one that kind of blows out a oh, little yeah. more. You, you know, you don't have to huddle around it like a little fire. You could probably stick one there and kind of get a couple going. Yeah, in. but having the windows open right next to it doesn't uh, help either. No. Like I said, it's just Let's enough see. to keep the edge off a little bit. Aaron Cohn. Yeah, this is Aaron Cohn. Right. Cohn's yeah, he's grounded out to short and hit by a pitch, and he's scored a run. <clears throat> so Zimmerman. Ready to go. Fouled up and out of way. Uh, flipped up out of play. Oh and one. Nice job, Henry. Working ahead. Coach goes out there for the coach visit. <clears throat> the oh one pitch. That one's there. Oh and two. And as my wife says, Greg. Best pitch to hit in baseball, the first pitch after the coach visit. Yeah. It's usually all number one right now on Main Street. <laughs> well, especially when there's bases loaded and there's right. nowhere to put anybody else anymore. 
uh, my wife says, I don't know why they don't hit that, swing that first pitch after the coach visit. It's always a good one. That's generally true. And then there's some other schools of thought, though, too. The coaches, you know, if you walk three batters in a row, they, they, they might say, well, take, wait, take, yeah, yeah, don't swing right, until right. you get a strike, strike. and make him, make him earn it. Right. 100%. Henry from the windup. The one, two. That's high. Now two and two. No place to put him, Greg. No yeah, place Henry, to put him. I mean, like we, we were talking to just a couple of batters ago, his, mm -hmm. he's got a fluid motion, but you can just tell he's just trying to overthrow a little bit. Just trying to throw a little too hard. And he is he already is throwing hard. He'll elect to go from the wind up again. Oh wait. Yeah, he's just you know throwing high and throwing throwing outside. That's just just over over stride and overthrowing and tough to throw tough to throw strikes doing that. How do they say it, Greg? He's all over the joint. Maybe so pitchers will be surprised too when they when they throw when they're not trying to overthrow. They'll get he more movement him. on their ball. They'll throw more strikes. And Henry's got good. He's got a good. So four walks in a row, and that plates a run. And now we're going to go to Reese George with a run in. And Champlin Park right. retakes the lead here in the middle frames. And they got a Reese George, he struck out looking, and he's flown out to left today high and tight ball one well henry's whip is still in good shape at the start of the year but his or i'm sorry his era is in good shape but his whip is is pretty high <laughs> whip is high infinity right, infinity right now i think <laughs> and beyond there you go gassed him up yeah he's, the velocity is not the issue well you you can see when he's not over when he just that was nice and smooth Butter. let it go right you know do it do it first strike There it is again. Good. Again, got up in on his in his got up in his kitchen a little bit there, and all he could do is flip that one out of play, and we'll go to one and two. I could go for a cup of hot cocoa, like piping hot. Wouldn't that be good right now? The I can I concur. The one two, you just missed. Nose running just a little bit here in a cool afternoon. They have wind guards out there for those mics. Do the, do the headsets have have like sniffle guards? Sniffle guard, you know, sniffle guard. <laughs> <laughs> three two. Activity in the Wildcat bullpen. Number three is warming up down there. Uh, Colton, Colton Maves. That's a strike. Got him looking, and a little bit of a delayed call. That was a very delayed call. call. Triangle, what do you think about that? It's like everybody in the house knew it, and he said, yeah, you're out. One down, and we're going to go to May Janish now. Max Janish. Max Janish flown out to left and reached on an error today. High and tight, ball one. Bases are still full of Rebels. Champlin Park with the blue top with white pinstripe and the white pant with white with blue piping down the leg. Piping. Infield fly in foul territory and nice play over there by first baseman Cody Olson gathers that for out number two. That just simply goes F3, two down. I'm going to Cal Ockley now with two in the bucket and Wildcats and looking to get out of this big jam sandwich Whoa. here. Henry Zimmerman looking Cal, to, Okay, we got to change Cal this here. Ockley. So Cal's batting in the eighth spot. Swings through that. Yeah, uh, Henry Zimmerman trying to back an 18-wheeler out of a small parking spot. <laughs> trying to get out of this thing. Just down, one and one. I don't so, know what happened to so him. So, Ockley, he's batting in the eighth spot. He's up towards the top of the sheet. So, go on, yeah, keep going up, 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 up. 
I don't know. I guess keep I can take down, him out of here. Keep going down. Keep going. He's got to be in there. Oh, you uh, you typed over Ma his name. Ma maybe, Remember yeah. that you did. Yeah, so I can take him out here. Yeah. He's back in the game. So. All right. The one-two pitch to Ockley. Follow that one back, and we'll stick at one and two. You can just add them down there somewhere. There you go. O C K U L Y Cal. You need them. Put a number. Yeah. Uh, that, that, yeah. Will that work or not? Yeah, I think you forgot to hit save. I did, but I didn't do anything to the name though. Right there should be in there. Yeah. Eight. Eight. Hit Eight. save. Didn't get oh. it. That's so soft hit into left field. One run is in. Olsen gathers two it runs. and two runs in on the little jam sandwich flare into left field for Cal Ockley. Gets himself a two out, two RBI single. That's a big one, Greg. That brings up right fielder number two, Connor Salmon. Fresh in with pitch inning number 17. Is this the ninth hitter? Yeah, number 17. So this is a new pinch hitter, number 17. Uh, Paul, De yeah. uh, Paul DeLong. Paul DeLong. He's the number nine hitter? Yeah. Well, I don't know what I'm doing here, Kevin, because I hit that, I did it, and it's not saving. Huh. Let me just look over here once. Paul DeLong, do you see him down here? Yeah, right there. I just hit him nine. Should I Yeah. do anything there? No. No, and just hit save here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know. I work on here. It's getting like six to three now, Champlin Park. There's one. Henry Zimmerman almost got out of the inning. And then a little jam sandwich off of Cal. Ockley's bat plated two. Now we're at three balls and a strike to Paul DeLong. Line tight. He walked him. And we're going to go back to the top of the order. And this will be the ninth batter of the inning. That's the top of the order. Now we go back to Nick Carlson. This is the ninth batter of the inning. Strike to Nick. Bases are loaded. Nick Carlson is 0 for 2, flown into left center, going back. That's going to split him out there in left field. One run is in, two runs are in, three runs are in. Digging for third base. The throw is going to be out at third. But not before. <clears throat> not before Nick Carlson with three RBI double here in the top of inning five. And thrown out at third. That goes eight, six, five on the putout if you're scoring along at home for the third out of the inning. Champlin Park Rebels send nine to the plate. They score six runs on one hit, Greg. No errors and none left. Four and a half in the books, nine three, Champlin Park. Well, so, I think no, they might two, have two, hits, two hits, two yeah, hits, two hits, two hits, two hits. Paul Cal Ockley and the double. So two hits, but there's one, two, three, four, five walks. So two hits and five walks. That'll add up to six runs and a hard Six runs. Hmm. Thirty-one.
Tanner Wiley still pitching. Oh, yeah, I got to switch sides. Yeah, hold on, Joe. So Tanner Wiley still pitching here in the bottom of inning five. Five that we got to go five. Got to subtract an inning. Oh. There we we'll go. One more. There we go. I'll change sides. Oh. There, there we go. go. Uh, Bryce Bevan. So we're at Bryce. We're at Bryce Bevan. We're at Bryce Bevan on the batter. So you have to go. Um, one up. one up, one up. There you go. You got him. Two and zero. Oh. Wildcats got their work cut out for them now. Down by six, nine to three here in the bottom inning. Five. We're at the eighth spot in the order. Right back up through the box and a solid single off the bat of Bryce Bevan. Nice piece of hitting there. Hit that right back where it came from, Greg. Right back through the wickets of Tanner Wiley and Bevan's on. Now we go to Austin Curdy. That was a nine hole hitter. Now we're going back to the top of the order to Austin Curdy. Curdy swings through that. It's 0-1. Away, one and one. Austin Curdy playing out in right field now. We have started in left field. He moved over to right. I don't know if he's still there or not. Fouled straight back up over the grandstand area. It is one and two. Nice block there by catcher Cal Ockley. Ockley had a big hit last inning. Whew, huge. They had a single. Two, 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 two out doubles. No, he had a single, but, yeah, it was a two no, RBI. Two sing, RBI, yeah, two sing, RBI single, single. Yeah. With two outs, two and then outs. they had a. Then they had the double. The base clearing, clearing double. Two out double. So five ribbies with two outs. Stacked up those six walks, and they made their way around the bags. Three and two on Austin Curdy. Good check swing. Good look there, and Curdy's on. And the Wildcats get two aboard. This is Nobody a, out. Nobody out, and we're going to go to Ben Johnson. As these spring games like this, these cold nights, they tend to go long, these games. <laughs> walks and it's slow, right? It'd be like three hours just freezing it up. Well, one of the things that happens too in baseball when the pitchers aren't, you know, if start not, you know, if you're not throwing strikes, well, then the guys out in the field start, you know, getting a little, getting a little tight and then, you know, the ball comes their way and then they, you know, it's easier to boot it. Yeah. So Ben Johnson, he's one for two. He doubled his last time up, struck out swinging his first time at the plate tonight. Nice opportunity for him here down 0 and 1. Our runners at first and second, and nobody out here in the fifth. Wiley, the Coyote, delivers, finds the strike zone. It's 0 and 2. Owen 2, uh, two hole hitter Ben Johnson. Johnson flips one up to left, tracking over. Left fielder, center fielder, and left fielder makes the catch. Nice job out there in left field. And there's one down. One down, we're gonna go to Chase McQuaid. Chase has hit the ball hard twice today was robbed by the shortstop his first time up on a hard hit ground ball, then a nice deep fly ball to center his last time up. Good opportunity here for McQuaid with runners at first and second and one in the bucket, hitting in the three spot, doing a nice job behind the dish. 
uh -oh. pickoff attempt into center field. Everybody's going to stay put. Gassed him up upstairs, 0-1. Tanner Wiley reared back for a little bit extra there. Threw a dart up high. A little high up in the zone, just probably a little outside mm -hmm. too, probably a ball. <clears throat> the 0-1 pitch to McQuaid. Here it comes. Inside, 1-1. One Yeah, in this situation right here where you're chasing McQuaid, I mean, you're down six runs, and, you know, the pitcher's going to be throwing strikes whenever possible. So just wait for that one to come right down the pipe and engage on it and drill it. Inside, two and one. Looking for something right between the belly button and the belt. Yes, sir. Yeah, up six runs, the Champlin Park coach is like, hey, throw strikes, don't walk anybody. and Chopper out in front of the plate and foul. Green grass out on the field here. Boy, first looks good. Looks first good, National doesn't it? Bank looks good. Of River Falls Field today. And baseball, can you believe it? Here is winter's over. We're in spring yeah. now. Baseball. It's going to really feel like spring in about four or five days. Oh, yeah, 60s late this weekend. Mm -hmm. The 2-2 pitch. That's down. Now it's 3-2. and two. Next week when people are watching the River Falls Sports Broadcasting Network and listening to Kevin Westhouse, <laughs> you're going to see some real green grass out on the hill up there and so maybe some right. leaves, leaves starting to Possibly. pop. Possibly, possibly. Caden Mueller waits on deck. The 3 2 pitch just missed there, and Tanner Wiley not happy about that. Little body English on little. Uh, well, we got the. Little animation, that's what I'm looking for, by Tanner Wiley not happy about the call, and McQuaid reaches on a free pass. And the bases are juiced for four-hole hitter Kate Mueller. He struck out looking and singled and scored his last time up. And we have a conference on the mound, Greg. Some Champlin Park Rebels. Let's see if we got any... Check the phone, see if anybody's chiming in on stuff over yeah. here. You know, a lot of people online today. Surprising large number. It's kind of nice. We had a question from Sarah Dusick. Wanted to know uh -huh. who the starting pitcher, who started for the River Falls Wildcats, and that would have been Tyler Nelson. Tyler Nelson did a nice job. Yeah, he threw one hit ball over two innings. Real nice. Away to four-hole hitter Caden Mueller. Looking to get the Wildcats back in this thing. Down six here in the fifth. Well, if Caden Mueller cuts into one and knocks it over the fence, we're, it's a ball game again, Kevin. Check swing foul. It's going to be even a little double. <clears throat> it's going to be tough today. That wind is blowing almost straight in from yeah. center. You're going to have to really get yeah. into one today. Even a little double. <clears throat> That'd be nice. Center fielder's playing moderately shallow center. Wildcats still with two more at bats after the. They got six in the seventh, yeah. Check swing, right side. Eats oh, up the first he, base. That's a fair him. ball. Yeah. One run is in, two runs are in. Yeah, just ate up the first baseman, Max Janish. 
It hit in fair territory, and that's going to go down as a hit yeah. for Caden Mueller. And plates a pair. Bryce Bevan scores, and Austin Curdy scores. And now it's runners at first and second. And we're going to Henry Zimmerman. Wow. Eat him up. A check swing. We were we were sort of talking about a, a grand slam, and we so got a, we check, got a check swing, swing two RBIs. single off the glove of the first baseman. Two RBIs. That's the two-run single in the book, though. It looks like a frozen rope in the morning, huh? A little excuse me. <laughs> one one. Threw that one past him. A little wrinkle on that or something. It's one and two. One in the bucket. One ball and two strikes on Henry Zimmerman. Now we had checked the runner at second, but he's back in safely. The pitch. Got him. Just nothing fancy there. Some good old country hardball. Old number one up in the zone. Right by him. Gets Zimmerman swinging. There's two down. Now we're going to go to Brooks Rivard. Brooks has flown out well, to short. We gotta, yeah, we got a pinch, pinch hitter. Pinch hitter. Number one. Uh, Tyler Nelson. Tyler Nelson. Brooks Rivard. So if I went into here. You could do that and put him. He's at the number one, two, three, four, five, yeah. six. Six spot. But, so no, I, I don't get rid of No, no, just Bentley bench. They put him at six. Let's see if that does it. Hit save. There yeah. it is. I wonder why it didn't do it on the last one. I don't one. know. One, one. One ball and one strike. Protractor down the right field line <laughs> in foul. One and two. Tanner Wiley, nothing that fancy right now. It's just how about some old number one, huh? Wiley set, checking the runners. The pitch just missed there. A little slide piece. Didn't get him to chase, and it's two and two. Speaking of chase, Chase McQuaid's on second. There he is. There he is. And Caden Mueller on first for the Wildcats. High and tight. Now the count works full. Three and two. On Tyler Nelson batting for Brooks Rivard in the DH role. I think Tyler actually was out in left field. There's all kinds of action, too, by the way, Kevin, uh, on the River Falls Sports YouTube network. You got girls soccer. soccer. Tonight, I and, believe. Or tomorrow, for sure, I know. I know and it's then tonight. Also Thursday. Yeah, I think, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. We've got so yeah, strike three swinging. We'll go over that here between innings. So Nelson goes down swinging for the third out of the inning, but the Wildcats do get a couple back. They get two runs on two hits, no errors, and two left. Five in the books now. Nine five, Champlin Park. We're going to the sixth. Yeah, a little commercial for River Falls Sports Broadcasting. Yeah, three uh, spring sports on R River Falls Sports Broadcasting this spring. We've got varsity baseball which you're watching now girls varsity softball will be on starting yeah. this saturday and then girls varsity soccer will also yeah. be happening as well on river falls sports broadcasting so we got it covered yeah uh first year coach last year matt smith and uh assistant coach ryan Scherz. he's you know the football coach mm -hmm. he's also the uh, assistant softball they had a heck of a year last year they uh Beat Hudson in the playoffs, you know, went went fairly deep, and they ended up losing out to Superior, I think, to go to the section finals. And um, but uh, the winning winning a season for River Falls softball last year in over three decades, so it was a great great year, good, good year for him. I tell you what, I, if you wanted some excitement, watch that girls varsity softball. Hey, there's talented group, but it's just fun. Yeah. The atmosphere of girls softball is really something. I mean, I did a couple of those games here, and some of the most Fun, entertaining things I've broadcast. Well, the, and and this is a, a, you know, 
Wildcats will have sophomore Audrey Aderman on the mound, and um, and she's a she's a solid pitcher, but young sophomore. Mm -hmm. But they have probably the top three hitters in the state of Wisconsin for leadoff: Lily Burke, and oh yeah, Jordan Torres, and Jordan Schwanz. Those are you know probably the top top three for sure hitters in the state of Wisconsin. Austin Curdy's pitching now. Okay, for the Wildcats. Austin Curdy. Just put him as yep, pitcher. I will. Yeah. That one I know how to do. And hit save. There you go. It should do it. There it is. Have no. Uh, there must like something with that guy's when I when I deleted his name. Yeah, there's oh, some, yeah. something must have happened with that yeah, one. Yeah. Because they're all they're all working so just it's like. It's working now. Yeah. Chase Oxborough. Well, I know, but it means yeah. Anyway, that's that one. There, that one spot, spot coming yeah. up. Oh yeah. That, just. Something and you type it in and hit save, and it doesn't didn't do it. Yeah, I don't know. We're good to go now, though. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we're good. We've got it ninety-eight percent covered. So Oxborough's in. Curdy's pitching. That's down low. Ball one here in the top of the sixth. Well, did you know I already promised that? I know you're play-by-play -play extraordinaire and yeah. the the godfather of all the Wildcat <laughs> sports on YouTube, but also you're also going to play sports information director. And uh, over, I'll let you make the call there. Go, uh, just that ball just made it. Did he catch it up there? Or he not? did. He yep. did. I was in foul territory. I had this beam right in my way, so that's a nice catch out there in right field. And there's one down. So you're going to play sports information director and and uh, take a snapshot of your of your book for home and away and send it to Joe at the Pierce County Herald. Okay. I suppose you might as well. Okay, if I get his email address. Uh, or you want it emailed or texted? Text. Okay, just write yeah. down a phone I'll, number. I'll, I'll okay. get it to you after okay. the game. Yeah. It's pretty messy. 2-0 oh on Brady Shornstein. Two balls and a strike now off the arm of Austin Curdy. The pitch. That's just down now, three and one. One of the bucket here in the top of the sixth. It's 9 5, Champlin Park. A little squib shot, right side. Going to be a tough play. Gathered on to first. Safe. Beat it out. Infield squib single. Off the bat of Brady Shornstein. That'll go down as a frozen rope in the morning. This cue shot at the head yeah. over to third. A little pull, pull cue. Now we go to uh, Brockton Sandell. Brockton's having a nice game. He's walked twice, doubled, and scored two runs. Nice job. One, one for one on the day? One for one with two runs scored and a couple ribbies. One ribby. Batting in the four spot is Brockton Sandell. One down, runner at first, Austin Curdy. Lights have just come on here at First National Bank of River Falls Field. Coming up on the two hour mark, Greg. A little shot into right. If that's fair, it's trouble. Foul. About 10 feet foul. A little oppo taco there. Just foul. Oh, you still have the. Oh, yeah. I got still, you still have the line. Right here. The, little oppo taco yeah. right here. Right. This is for pitches. Yeah. <laughs> Some, somebody who, got somebody got the pen down here. Who not. came up with the? Is it the clown punch? What the is clown it? punch? Punch. Oh yeah. A little clown punch. That is a little soft. <laughs> Whoops. I've seen you. I've seen you throw out a couple clown punches out there. <laughs> <laughs> Just get the bat on the ball, right? Yeah. Nothing too fancy. A little clown punch. Little, little clown punch. Little clown punch over the shortstop. <laughs> so, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> one ball and two strikes. On 
Brockton Sandell just missed down low, now two and two. Do well, you... Kevin, I think it'd be a requirement for, uh, for for Joe from the Pierce County Herald to come up. He has to come up with some with a with a with some word to go up on the board up there. And then you'll earn your keep. All right, I've got the we've got the pen right here, so we just keep the pen handy. Yeah. Someone added that one. That was not me. This is noise. That's pretty good, though. And we, down, we missed a strikeout. strikeout. Yeah. We did. So Sandal goes down, and he's out. Two down, and now we go to Aaron Cohen. I know the chin music. You know, chin music. I, you know, yeah, where's that? I don't have it on there. I can't believe that. Let's see. Now you're in the game. What do we got, Greg? Call it. Uh, Aaron Cohen. It's a single through the hole to right field. That's a base hit for third baseman Aaron Cohn. That would be the eighth hit of the day for the Rebels. And now up at the plate, number eight, Reese George. Reese George. Reese has struck out looking twice and flew out to left. Opportunity, two out, RBI opportunity right here for Reese George, or that runner at second base. That camera's getting dark. I'll have to fix that in a second. Get off of that. Austin Curdy. He sat the one ball pitch. Whoo! Old Uncle Charlie pays a visit there, and it's one and one. A little knee buckler on that. Yeah. Just crept the inside part of the it plate. Did. Just tickled it. Tickled it. One and one. Another one. A little spin on that. It's one and two. Right here, old Uncle Charlie. We haven't, we haven't seen any 59-footers tonight, but we've. No, we haven't seen. No, that one is almost a backyard whiffler, but yeah. not quite. It's the one and two. Gassed him up at the knees. Austin Curdy. Gets Reese George looking, and that's going to do it for the Rebels here in the top of inning six. A couple strikeouts for Curdy. Does a pretty nice job. Gets two strikeouts. They get no runs on the two hits, no errors, and two left. Five and a half in the books. We'll stick at 9-5 Champlin Park as we go to the bottom of the six. I'm going to go change my lighting on that camera down there. I'll be right back. Austin Curdy looked good. He had threw some strikes. Why don't you pop on the headset, Joe? We'll talk to you for a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Greg Peters alongside. Now we're out. Kevin's going to fix a camera. And Joe, how do you say your last name, Joe? Piney. That's what I thought. Yeah. So Joe Piney from the Pierce County Herald is joining us up in the booth. And Joe, what's uh, how do you like the Wisconsin baseball in April? Oh, well, this is fantastic. <laughs> At least there's no snow, right? That's right. Heck yeah. Yeah, the team was out here. Uh, Shoveling, there was some snow along the side, you know, along the walls and stuff. They were all shoveling out and getting it ready to go and stuff. So yeah, it looks like the ground crew did a really yeah. good job. You gonna do it? You you focusing on any uh, kind of preseason stories for any of the you know Prescott? I know you cover Prescott, Ellsworth, yep. River Falls. Yep. Those are kind of the three, and then Spring Valley a little bit, or yeah, Spring Valley and Elmwood as well. Yeah, I do a little bit of UWRF, but yeah, you know. yeah, cover a lot of sports and. What's uh? Do you have a do you have a favorite sport that you cover or not? Or you just like them all? Uh, I'm, I love baseball. Do you? <laughs> well, I was about I I read your column. Uh, it was maybe a week or two ago. You were talking about um, MLB expansion and stuff with yeah. some. They um. And I thought it was a it was a great column and stuff. And but do you do you have any preseason kind of write ups on some of the softball to any of the spring sports at all or? Yeah. Um, Things we should look out for? Yeah, this week we're uh, covering baseball and softball. Obviously, it's opening day for both of those because uh, games got pushed back from last week due to weather. Uh, girls soccer is starting again here in River Falls. Um, I'm going to do a semi like bi-weekly column this year on the St. Paul Saints, just kind of going to a couple of those games. Yeah. So. Why don't you give your headset back to Kevin, and then you can take mine if you want. Yeah, you, Kevin can talk to you. Yeah, keep going. So, so Vandell is in pitching for the Champlin Park Rebels. Vandell pitching now. Is it Connor Vandell? Ooh, look out and heads up. Watch your liver in the Champlin Donovan, Rebels Donovan, Park Donovan, dugout. 
Well, Donovan? Donovan Fendel. Donovan. And number four is batting for the Wildcats, and that would be Brady. Jack, Jack Manninen. Jack Manninen, huh? For Cody Olson, huh? He's batting for Cody. So whoever Cody was. Seven. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. A lot going on there, Greg. One ball and two strikes. Vandell stares in, toes the rubber. Peering in over the mitt between the tip of the cap and the bill of the glove the glove and it's high. The tip of the glove and the bill of the cap is where he's peering in. It's two and two now on Jack Manninen. In for Cody Olson here in the bottom of inning six. High chopper left side. Gathered on to first. Got him. Sorry about that. I was with the camera. It's six, three ground out. One out, and we go to Ty Manninen. Now number two, Chase Rudolph. Oh, another pinch. Is Chase hitting for uh, Bryce Bevan? No. For Ty. <laughs> so who do we got in number two, Greg? Uh, Chase Rudolph. Chase Rudolph fouls that away. So Chase Rudolph is in for Ty Manninen. Falls behind in the count, 0-1. Just down, one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. We're in the bottom of the sixth. It's 9-5 Champlin Park over the Wildcats. Wildcats trying to scratch and claw themselves back in this thing with five outs left. The pitch. That's down, now two and one. The pitch inside, now three and one. Three balls and a strike. Wildcats need some base runners here, down by four. Vandell rocks and delivers. Hit into left, left fielder cruising back, still going back, got under it and makes the catch. Pretty well struck ball there by Chase Rudolph, but left fielder gets underneath it and makes the catch. Two down, and now we go to Bryce Bevan. Bryce is one for two with a single and a run scored today. We're at the nine spot in the order. Just away, ball one. Donovan Vandell rocks and delivers. That's inside, 2-0. Oh. You play baseball for the Cardinals when you went there? No, I didn't. I wish. The 2-0. Oh. Little chopper in front of the plate. That's going to be a tough play. Gathered. On to first. Oh, God, I want to play. That nice job by catcher Cal Alkali. He hops out of there like a cat on a hot tin roof, makes a play, a 360 spin, and threw a strike to first and got Bryce Bevan on a 2-3 put out and not an easy one. Wow. Heck of a play. And the Wildcats, three up, three down here in the bottom of the six. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Six in the books now. 9-5, Champlin Park over the Cats. We're going to the seventh. So you're busy this spring. Yeah, we got boys golf starting again soon, too. I think that's next week. Now, there's something we never broadcast. Boys golf. Golf. <laughs> golf. The track's pretty tough. It'd too. be a tough one. Track would be tough. Golf would be really tough. 
now that's a good sport though for a high school kid golf right every day after school there's no running there's no wind sprints you just go play nine right yeah. work on your chipping your putting a life skill you can take with you forever 100 percent same pitcher uh curdy on the mound again number nine yep awesome Curdy. Yeah. yep I think you get a couple of kids out there with some drones, you can maybe broadcast golf. Yeah, I suppose, right? Get a ball tracker That's device. Next level. The next drone, level. Drone for for That'd be quite a setup. You could do the broadcast from here. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we're going to the seventh inning. It'll be seven, eight, and nine due up for the Champlain Park Rebels. Janish Ockley, and then a pinch hitter, most likely. They've been rotating them through there in the nine spot. Max Janish will lead off the inning. Max is 0 for 3. He's reached on an air one time, flew out to left, and flew out to first. Austin Curdy came in last inning for the Wildcats, and Allowed a couple hits, but minimized the damage and got two strikeouts mixed in there. Janish, still some wind blowing around. You can hear it. Turn that down. So Janish is in. We're in. We're ready to go here in the top of the seventh. Just missed there, ball one. Fans pretty much sticking around. Not a bad crowd wrapped up in the blankets today. Bring out the heavy jacket. Temperature probably dropping into the upper 30s now here on April 1st in River Falls, Wisconsin. The 1-1, one -one. little jam sandwich hit to right. Nice job by the right fielder coming in to gather that. It's number 20 out there in right field, Greg. Who's for the Wildcats? Uh, Henry, Zimmerman. Henry Zimmerman back out in right field and makes a nice catch. Got that one up in on Max Janish's fists, and Zimmerman didn't have him. Not playing very deep, had him played perfectly, and that's a soft F9. One down, we go to Cal Oakley now. Cal's having a nice game. He's two for three. Double and a single and a run scored and a couple RBIs. Cal Oakley hitting in the eighth spot, having a game. Falls behind in the count to Curdy 0 and 2. The 0 2 pitch. Look out. High and tight. Come up in his kitchen. Missed there. That's some great hustle there by Cody Olson. Look at him, Cody. Look at him. Look at a kid. Everybody's sitting in the dugout, and Cody Olson's like, I got that. He's trying to stay warm. He's trying to. He's a smart one. He's got the farmer gloves on. That's outstanding. There's a hustle play to be, play to be made. Cody Olson's always on it. Oh, that is filthy. <laughs> that was the old backyard whiffler right there. Mm. Two down. Who do we have here, Greg? Number 17 for Champlin Park. That's Paul DeLong. Oh, that's Paul DeLong again. Paul walked and scored his last time up. Yeah, Curdy's throwing well. Yeah, real well. The 2 0. Whew, just missed there, now 3 0. Hey, Greg, there's a headset right behind here. Let's plug you in. Let's get you going. Let's get you going. We got one. We got the, we've got the stuff. Why, why not? Hold on. I'm going to plug you in here. Plug you in here. Got a walk. 17's going to first. OK. 
Okay. Paul DeLong. Paul DeLong is going to first on the walk. I'm going to turn you up here. Let's break this headset in, Greg. How you doing? I'm doing well. Oh, there we go. Boom. Gotcha. Nick Carlson's at the plate. Back Kevin's the, doing some technical work for back you. Back to the top of the order. We got three headsets going now. And Curdy works ahead of Nick Carlson back at the top of the order. Nick doubled two out, three RBI double his last time up. Pretty much the difference in the game. Popped up foul and out of play. Piece of candy. Who do we have coming up for the Wildcats in the bottom um, of the seven? We're going to go top of the order, Greg. Curdy, Ben Johnson, and Chase McQuade. McQuaid. <laughs> it sounds like some runs for the Wildcats right there. Potentially. Gassed him up right there. Curdy, that, that's a seed. That was a seed or maybe uh, a dart. Just pumping cheddar. <laughs> He's just pumping cheddar. Nothing fancy. Paint, nice job by Curdy. Couple some corners. Painting some corners just – and two more strikeouts for Curdy. So Curdy comes in and he gets four strikeouts in two innings. Real nice job there for Austin Curdy. He gets Nick Carlson looking, and that'll do it for the Rebels here in the top of inning seven. They send four to the plate. They get no runs on no hits, no errors, and one left. Six and a half in the books. Wildcats need four to keep her going. It's 9 5. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. Well, and, you know, one of the things, Kevin, and, and you know, you look at today's game, and it's, it's first one of the year, mm -hmm. and the only blemish that was just that I think it was the five walks that Zimmer, Zimmerman yeah. had in the yes, right here in the one, two, three, four, fifth, fifth inning. Yeah, but um, he's boy, we talked about it too. His he's got a smooth motion. I mean, I I, I think that's a going to be a very uncharacteristic couple innings for him. Yeah, you know, for the rest of the season, I think he's get you know Henry's going to going to come on strong here for the rest of the season. But the Wildcats, they have some guys that can throw for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that they was do. the only blemish. Had those walks and the all, walks all scored. And uh, other than that, not too bad of a game for the Wildcats today. And walks we still will have uh, – yeah, We'll go ahead. Walks, we, walks go ahead. will haunt. That's all I was going to yeah. say. Is this Donovan Vendell still pitching? Okay. Donovan Vendell still on the mound. You know who Donovan Vendell throws like? He look, he, he looks like a, a little bit smaller version of David Cohn. There you go. Remember David Cohn? I do. New York Mets, I believe, wasn't he? Nope. Season two will turn him down. He had to go, okay. go do his job. There you go. I turned him down, so we're good. All right. So we got a strike there right out of the gate. 0-1-1. Uh, and Austin Curdy, is it, is it Austin Curdy batting or pinch hitter? Sorry, pinch hitter number three, Greg. That is uh, Colton Maves. Colton I'll Maves. I'll try to change that real quick. He likes to get his name on there, doesn't he? Col Colton Maves. Everybody likes to get their name up on the broadcast. One. Maves grounder to second. Going to be a tough play. Gathers it in the hole. Oh, nice job out there by the second baseman for the Champlin Rebels. Champlin Park Rebels to get Colton Mabes on a 4-3 ground out, one down. Now we're going to go to Ben Johnson. Oh, now yeah. we're going to Auden Pankinen. Yeah, Auden in there. Auden Pankinen. Auden Pankinen now batting. He's up. With one down, two outs left, swings through that, strike one. Auden's, he's got... He throws lower 90s. He, I was going to say, speaking of arms, he's one of the better ones the Wildcats oh, have for yeah. sure. He's a dandy. That misses. Yeah, we want to thank all of you that tuned in this afternoon, the Legion of Loyal listeners. Watch some early spring baseball here from River Falls, Wisconsin. Got the base offense on the camera set up. You can be looking forward to... Uh, some more shots, center field shots and other shots around as we get going here later this week. Tomorrow, I think, we'll still be on base offense, and then we'll 
move into by Thursday, hopefully have everything going. So. Well, then Wednesday also we're going to have – it's not going to be, be a preseason show because oh. they'll have already logged in a couple games. But yeah. yeah. We'll have uh, a softball, softball. Softball se- coaches show and we'll have the, yeah, give the us seniors that, on. And yeah. that's be Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We're going to have it down at – we're going to shoot it down at Johnny's, but uh-huh. it'll be live and mm-hmm. you can, you know, watch it afterward too. But we'll have quite a few things to talk about. We'll be able to talk about the first – couple games and then strike uh, out for Pankinen. he's done two down yeah Kinda so what's yeah. in store for the softball girls <laughs> that's exciting this is Usgard. we'll get him up there Cal Usgard. Usgard. Riley Riley Riley, Riley, Riley Usgard. Usgard. last opportunity for the Wildcats here New guards ahead in the count, one ball and no strikes. Yeah, I'm excited for you guys to be doing softball. That's gonna be that's gonna be fun. Coaches show Wednesday night. I'm gonna go oh, home tonight. And, I'm gonna go home tonight and schedule that, Greg. I'll get that scheduled up on the YouTube. High chopper, right side, gathered on to first. Got him, and that's your ball game. So Usgard grounds out to second, two grounds out to second that inning, and that's gonna do it. So then I think yep. if you hit, hit uh, what does it say, end, ball game. If you hit ball game, it'll go final. Now watch this. It should go. Hit it again. There you go. Final. Oh, yeah. And there's your final right there, 9-5. Champlin Park gets six in the top of the fifth, and that pretty much does it in for the Wildcats. They start out the season – 0 and 1, but we have a game tomorrow. I don't know Ke- who Steve. Who do we play tomorrow? Uh, Steve Manford thinks it's Eastridge. Eastridge. So that, I'm guessing they'll be a pretty good team. That's too. That's good. So I have to go home and schedule that too. So yeah. hadn't wasn't really even planning on that, but I'll be back with you tomorrow night uh, along with Brian McQuaid. I think we'll maybe take your seat of power tomorrow, Greg, yeah. and run the scoreboard. So yeah, I'm going to be over watching track. Okay. Uh, now that we're not doing the softball game, which I didn't think we were, but. You threw me a curveball over the t- over text. I, I was I was lost. I, yeah, I've just been. Thanks for the glove, the Michael Jackson glove. It, did it work for a little oh, bit? Yeah. You know what? Oh, it's warmer up, higher up. Right. It's Look heat, at that. Heat's rising. Yeah. Right, right there. Yeah. It's not bad. We should have been nesting up underneath here. So yeah, good to be back. Good, yeah. Glad baseball's back. Well, glad to have you here, uh, Greg. It's been fun. The season opener, Wildcats take one on the chin tonight. They lose to Champlin. Park Rebels by a final score of 9-5. to five. Final line of the game, Champlin Park, they could score nine runs on eight hits. They had no errors. The Wildcats, five runs on six hits and one error. Game time, two hours and 16 minutes. Well, it was fun to be up here, Kevin. Thanks for having me up. Well, thanks for coming up tonight. Greg. i got to make sure. Steve, are those uh, porta-potties out there on right or, or not? Is there any porta-potties out there yet? I'll go. I'll look. Okay. Couldn't have done it. Couldn't have done it without you, Greg. So thank you very much for. Uh, Scoreboard's kind of fun. It's 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 an it's intense, but it's fun. So you, what you keep that in your back pocket. Yeah. So whenever someone so whenever someone says, "Hey, baseball's boring," <laughs> say, "I've got something for you to do." It's like playing. <laughs> it's like playing a video game. A little There's bit. There's so many buttons it's, to it's hit. It's a lot. Lot going on there. Yeah. So Greg, thanks for doing that. Yeah. Hopefully the fans appreciate yeah, that good at time. home. On behalf of uh, head coach Ryan Bishop and the River Falls Wildcats baseball club. And my great color commentator, Greg Peters, I'm Kevin Westhouse saying thanks again for joining us, everybody. Until next time, good night, everyone.